Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, thanks for joining us. Um, this meeting is just for your information is being recorded for those who can attend tonight. Uh, will be available on the website. Um, so just so for your information, uh, my name is Bradley Radovich. Um, I'm part of the Fort Worth W Department of Transportation and Public Works and the Capital Delivery Team. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit tonight about this project, this upcoming project, uh, city of for being done by the city of Fort Worth. Uh, I'm the project manager for this for this upcoming improvements at the intersection of University Drive and West Fifth Street. Um, thank you for attending this meeting. We hope that this will be almost as good as uh, being at a live presentation. So we'll try to make it our best. Um, in order to make it clear as possible for everybody, please, we can hold the questions to the end or um, I'll open a time for question and answer at the end. And you can also use the chat function um, to ask questions during the presentation. My colleagues are going to be monitoring that and we'll address them as well after this formal part of the presentation, which should only take 10, 10 to 15 minutes or so at the most. Um, it's very short, so um, let's see. I don't, Jeff. I don't see um, Ms. Beck, so um, I'm going to introduce some of the, my colleagues tonight. Um, the lead engineer for the project is Ganesh Gopalan. He is with us tonight. He's a professional engineer from IEA Incorporated in Dallas, a consulting engineer. Um, Raul Lopez. He's my boss, my associate, my program manager for the arterials in the transportation and public works department. Um, and last but not least is Jeff Allen, uh, Jeffrey Allen of uh, TPW's uh, communications specialist. So he's the one that makes all this possible for for me to be here tonight. So. Hopefully everybody can see the um, slide. Let me know if you can't. Um, so this, the agenda for tonight, this is this presentation is meant to provide information for the public, for you about the scope of the project. And it's currently, this project's currently advancing through the design phase. Um, we're gonna also talk, touch on the schedule and budget. Um, the primary, Objective of the project is to signalize the intersection um, to optimize the traffic operations and improve safety for the, the motoring public and pedestrians in, in this uh, site. So pretty simple that one. So this is a overview of the site a project location. Um, this project's located at the intersection, of course, of West 5th and University Drive again. It's about two miles west of City Hall in the Linwood area. Uh, the traffic conditions exist currently at this site and include a stop condition for West 5th Street in each direction. University Drive is a through traffic. It's through traffic in the north-south direction, two lanes, two through lanes and a left turn in each, each direction. West 5th Street is a single lane in each direction currently and will be at the end. This project basically will address safety and traffic flow locally at this at this intersection. So currently there's a, the two stop signs are indicated here. Um, so just wanted to point that, make sure. So the project it's going to improve the traffic flow at this intersection primarily by the installation of traffic signals. And pr primarily they will protect the left turn movements. Uh, from West 5th Street onto University Drive. In each direction, and it will also give signal protection to left turns onto 5th Street. From University Drive in both both directions. This this. Signalization will greatly improve the safety of all turning vehicles, particularly those turning left onto the busy 
University Drive thoroughfare there. So from each direction of 5th Street. We're also upgrading the pedestrian facilities with crosswalks, curb ramps, pedestrian signals, uh, and making this intersection fully accessible. All elements of the design, of course, will address apl applicable codes for the new construction of public facilities. I think we're, I'm primarily uh, more familiar with ADA, perhaps you are as well. Um, so that's um, for pedestrian access. This is an overhead view of the proposed new layout of the intersection. The turn lane capacity of University Drive is going to be is being evaluated and calculating the length needed for left turn lanes to store store turning vehicles. Uh, the lane lines, the stop bars, crosswalks, all be restriped in this project. Pedestrian ramps and crosswalks will be installed. Um, there will be only one walk across University, as shown here on the north side, um, the north crossing of Fifth there. And this is the standard usage based on the usage levels of West Fifth Street. We only really need that one crossing there. Each corner is going to have push button activators for pedestrian crossing indications. So down here, you in you if you're a pedestrian in Fort Worth, you've seen these. Um, I would bet you've seen these um, typical pedestrian push button activation uh, signs and buttons. So um, these will be installed at the site as well. This is um, just an engineering view of the same layout. Um, pardon the uh, quality of the. It's, I really wanted just to show that there will mast arms will be extending here that, that hold the signal heads. So uh, you'll see, I just wanted to show those locations. It's kind of, I understand it's hard to see, I'm sorry, um, but for indications for say eastbound, you'll see that there's a mast arm here with these indicators. So they're pretty visible and uh, they're very, it's very common the locations of these, it's nothing that will confuse anybody. It's just, um, I just wanted to show it because it's part of the construction and, um, you know, we have to drill case that's the, for supports for the foundations. And so when you see the, them out there, I just wanted to make sure that you knew that that was part of what they were doing. So um, it shouldn't be an issue for any driver. Um, Let's see. Well, it's a little bit about the funding. Um, it's it's funded primarily by the 2018, well, totally by the 2018 bond program. Um, the the overall budget is seven hundred and seventy thousand dollars, which includes the engineering, real estate services, uh, utility coordination, city administration costs, and the construction budget, which we estimate at this point is four hundred thousand dollars. So it's um, it's got a little bit of a contingency in there. Uh, so, but overall, that's our, our funding for this project. We're currently, as we said before, in the design phase. Um, we're nearing pre-final design level. Uh, other activities that are continuing include the utility investigation and the right of way acquisition process uh, for any real estate that's needed uh, to construct the the uh, facilities there. We expect to be ready to procure a contractor and start construction by late summer of this year. We expect the construction to take six months in total, uh, ending in January of, of 2023. Uh, we don't anticipate like major impact to traffic patterns during construction, but you know there'll be some periodic uh, lane closures associated with the work. Um, we'll work with the contractor 
to minimize the impact of traffic during construction, of course, especially during rush hours, peak hours. Um, as we go forward, that would that's part of our task. So. And Nick, <laughs> I told you it was short, so <laughs> if it seems short, to, it seems short to me, but uh, we're, we are excited about the project and implementing these improvements at this location for the citizens. Um, this is my contact information. It's also on the website. Uh, we're going to continue to update the website as we move forward with the project. Um, and we appreciate your taking the time with us tonight. So um, I'm I'm open to questions now, and along with my colleagues, um, perhaps we'll try to answer any questions that you can have. Um, this is Mark can... Smith. I live in Linwood. Yes, sir. My question is, how is this intersection? Uh, being signalized going to interact with the unsafe condition that the city put in place when they changed the lanes that no one still understands at six. Right. Right. It's an unsafe condition you created already. How is that going to interact with that? So we, we are aware of the uh, tapering lane uh, coming northbound from West 7th. Yeah. That's correct. The one that people look like they're about to cause accidents every day. Yes, we, we are going to forward that concern to our traffic management um, staff so they can look at, at the condition and restripe or provide additional signage if necessary. It, it seems like it's only a block away from what you're doing here. You'd think you'd include it. I understand that. that. Will this light yet another light that goes uh, red to a university and stays that way until someone sits on the intersection at 5 30 in the morning when they're trying to go to work like the ones at trail and lancaster right are you talking about trail drive and lancaster well both of those just recently after a year finally don't make you sit on a red every morning at 5 30 in the morning because they had it set to traffic calming when people are trying to go to work this one needs to be green to university until someone sits on the signal at, on 5th at off peak times like that to not create yet another impediment to getting to work. If I understand correctly, the one at trail in Lancaster has been corrected. It finally got corrected after a year. So I'm taking notes so that we can forward these to our traffic uh, management folks. You let them know I finally, ex uh, I'm, I'm fi it's super excited that they finally listened. It took a year. Just like they left the unsafe condition. Just, oh yeah, the unsafe condition was even more unsafe when they had it striped the other way and they changed it after a week when they figured out they were about to cause deaths. Okay, we, yeah, well, yeah, still we get the feedback. This is, this is the purpose of this meeting so we can learn about things that are going on. In addition uh, to that, are you going to invite more people to use 5th Street by making it easier to get onto it? No, mm -hmm. the, the purpose of this project is uh, to allow, there, there's, there was a study done um, and 11 accidents occurred within just a single year. So the purpose of the signal is to allow gaps for people that are in 5th to be able to safely turn northbound or southbound. Which um, could increase traffic on 5th Street. There is a possibility, yeah. But okay. just checking. Yeah. I've got a question, please. Can you hear me? Go ahead. Hello, my name's David Dodson. I live at 2913 Mary Mac. I am uh, the zoning chair for the Linwood Neighborhood Association and the West 7th Neighborhood Alliance. And I guess I have a my, my first question is. Where did this project even come from? We never heard about it until it showed it showed up in the mailbox and uh, uh, on the internet, you know, in the last month. And we never had a chance as a neighborhood to weigh in on it. And I think any effort to to create more traffic on Fifth Street is a huge mistake, and it's going to back traffic up at Carroll Street, which is already a horrible intersection, and Fifth Street is in horrible condition. There's speeders on it all the time. And, and this is going to increase traffic on Fifth Street. It's also going to increase traffic cutting through Linwood, turning on Templeton, turning on Merrimack, and cutting through to the apartments. 
And I, to me, the correct the correct way to solve the problem that you've got with the, the wrecks is to put bollards out there like Street, Sixth Street has, where you can only turn right into it as you're headed northbound, and you can only turn right going out of it on University uh, to head northbound, and you can't cross it. But we've already got a, a, an arterial at 7th Street, two blocks away. We've got another one at White Settlement, six blocks away. And we've got a, 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 a pedestrian walkway two blocks away at Bristol. And I don't understand why we're spending three quarter million bucks or half a million bucks, whatever it costs, to do this. I mean, we got a whole lot bigger problems than than th this intersection here. And I, I don't, I, 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 you know, where did this come from? So precisely, this meeting is to let public. Um, you know, present the the project. This is this is just the beginning. This is the first meeting that we have, and um, the the signal. This is a signalized project or signal intersection or intersection signalization project. So, the, the scope of the project is basically signalizing the intersection and then make it ADA compliant for pedestrians. Uh, that's why the budget is so low. And typically, signalized intersections, uh, those projects are. Basically, a list of intersections, and they're not highly publicized. So that may be why it's the first time you hear about it. When we have arterials, you know, that are in the bond program, those are those are uh, publicized more than the intersections or signal signalization of intersections um, is. Regarding uh, traffic increase, I, I cannot tell you whether it's going to increase or not. It will improve safety. We we have shown that there's been 11 accidents within a year. And the purpose of it, you know, first and foremost, we got to think about safety. And how many accidents did you cause when you rechanged it at six? I, I I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to tell you that. So we'll look at that. We'll forward that to our traffic management folks, traffic engineers um, division, for them to look at that. I have a. May I speak? Absolutely. Okay, I'm Eva Bonilla and I'm the media past chair of Linwood neighborhood. And what we were trying to get a signal light at Fifth and Carroll, y'all or well, traffic told us that it was too close to the signal light on 7th Street. And to me, it is more, um, I guess it's more of a casualty to have it at Fifth and, and uh, university than it would have been to have it at 5th and Carroll. And so we got a four-way stop sign at 5th and Carroll, but uh, we, you know, now they're telling us that, y'all are telling us that it's okay to have a signal light closer to a terrible intersection. I mean, that intersection at university, uh, all of Camp Bowie and all of those, that's worse than just having the 7th Street signal light. So may I ask you a question, Ms. Bonilla? Uh, Ms. Bonilla? Yes. What, you, you categorize it as worse. Can you elaborate what you mean by worse? Is it is there more backup, backup or is it safety related as you go northbound? Or it's, why is it worse? Okay, you sit, if everybody sits at the signal light, as you know, and now we're talking about the northbound on university for a long time. As soon as it turns green, it's like a speedway. Everybody gasses it to get out, to get out over there. And so the speed is increased twice fold as at 7th Street and Carroll. And the inflation of the signal deters the speeding because you have to watch whether it's yellow or red when you so that's one of the deterrents. That's because because there's no signal, there's no impediment from West 7th all the way to White Settlement, that's why people speed. That's 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 one of the reasons why people speed. By putting a signal there on a crosswalk across the road, that will make people, and I'm not saying everybody, but that will catch the attention of people and slow down because they know there's a signal coming up and they'll have a red ball as they approach it. So you're telling me that the signal at 5th is going to be synchronized with the signal on 7th and University? No. I'm not saying that. I'm saying if you 
if you pass a signal at West 7th, there is a chance that you may not get it right on 5th. Therefore, you have to slow down. You won't be able to speed like you do today. Therefore, improving safer. Hmm. The longer the stretch of road without any impediments, the more people will speed up. Well, people speed because they're frustrated. And exactly. all this is going to do is this is going to create a tremendous amount of frustration and people are going to dive down 5th Street so they don't have to wait on another traffic light to take them to 7th Street to sit in that left turn lane while it goes through Bailey, Camp Bowie, and 7th Street and finally allows them to turn left. That you're, you're not solving a problem, you're creating a problem. 5th Street is a horrible street. And if you don't repair 5th Street and put a, a, a stop sign or speed bumps, and I know you don't like speed bumps, so let's talk about a stop sign at Curry and at Foch, just to get the traffic to slow down on 5th Street, you're making a huge mistake. And then when they get to Carroll Street, there's parking on both sides of the street at that intersection. And one car can't, two cars can't get through it. So if you're coming out of Montgomery Plaza or you're turning left on Carroll, if there's a car sitting there, you have to wait. I mean, this, I guarantee you that you are going to increase traffic on 5th Street twofold. And if you deny it, I, 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 I mean, I, we're going to be out there in a year talking about it. But this needs more study. This is not correct. And you're not solving a problem. You're creating a problem. And we appreciate the feedback. This is precisely what these meetings are all about, about, you know, hearing feedback from you all. Um, and I, and I realize this is the first time you hear about it. As, you know, we haven't done anything yet. We're, we're in the design phase. So I'm going to forward all this feedback to our traffic engineers uh, for us to talk about it and consider these other options that you're talking about. And you say uh, a stop sign or some sort of deterrent at Perry and Folk Street would be helpful? Yeah, I mean, if you're going to if you're going to signalize that intersection, you're going to double the traffic on 5th Street. I guarantee you. And it's going to turn into a drag strip from people that would normally go up to 7th and then go left. And so you're going to have to slow them down somehow. But there's already a know, stop sign, but it had to be like a four way stop sign there or, or three way, a four way stop sign. Because there's one uh, on Curry. And yeah. so and the, there's one on the Fudge too. Yeah, and on Fudge, but it's got to be a, a four way stop sign for that intersection to stop everything. And then on top of that, I would have I would have rather had used the bond money to repair Fifth Street, because Fifth Street is terrible. Nobody repairs it. It's always uh, terrible. And Sixth Street, Sixth Street too. Yes, yeah, six, Fifth and Sixth Street, Fifth and Sixth Street. I agree. Oh, they're both awful. Mm -hmm. yeah. Unfortunately, this is 2018 bond, so that has passed. All those, you know, all of that has been. Um, you know, voter on 2018. So this, this is the red number to the 2018 bond, I should say. Uh, on the 2022 bond, we have a number of other segments. I, I don't believe that 5th and 6th are there, but again, you know, I'm taking note of these so that we can put them through our, uh, the folks that are do, do the uh, product programming so that we can put them on the list. Right. So what you have now is a fait accompli by only presenting this when it's already gotten to the point where the funding is already allocated to it. Yeah, this, this was That's correct. So we can't stop you. Well, I'm not saying I'm not saying you can't stop it. If if we look at it and if it doesn't make any sense, um we we might do something else. We're we're getting the feedback and we're we're going to look at it. Now, putting the signal or not putting a signal doesn't have any impact on whether the street is in bad shape or not. Uh, surface wise. So those are two different things. Whether that's going to increase traffic or not, we'll, we'll have to look at we'll have to look at traffic patterns and see if, if it is likely that it's going to increase, increase traffic patterns. Let me ask you you, you guys well, I guess say I'm confused why you wouldn't have done a traffic study before you started the project. I'd have to talk to our traffic management folks. They they created the project. I'm sorry I don't have those details. As to I couldn't I even I don't know. I've raised my hand for a long time, but I don't really know how this worked. It sounds like we just need to start speaking, but 
what I'm hearing is basically very logical information from the people who live in the area and travel that road daily multiple times and illogical information from the people who don't. Um, I do travel down that road multiple times a day and I'm in complete agreement with what other people have voiced. Putting a traffic signal there, especially if it's not going to be synchronized, will be a really bad idea. Um, there used to be three lanes on university and now those shrink to two exactly at fifth. And a lot of cars go to the far right lane to cut into the person in front of them. So if there's a traffic light there, there is going to be all those people on the right lane who all they want to do is cut in front. But that's going to be causing more accidents. Um, also, I don't see why if the concern is that there are vehicles making left turns onto university, I don't see why putting a sign that says no left turn on both sides of the um, West 5th wouldn't solve the issue. That seems a lot more logical. And if the issue is that there is money allocated to do something here and you feel like you have to put some sort of control between 7th and White Settlement, it seems like the best way to do that would be to maybe change that signal at Bristol and make that a traffic light. At least then you're still breaking up the flow, but not two blocks away from a major intersection. Well, I apologize. Somehow the application just kicked me out of the meeting, so I missed all of that. Can you repeat? I apologize. No, no, that's okay. What I was saying is that I've been listening to what you folks have been saying uh, on both sides, and I'm in complete agreement with people who travel that road daily. Um, unless you travel it daily, then you wouldn't know all the issues that we encounter. I travel down the road three times, four times a day. And when university was changed from three lanes to two lanes, right at Fifth Street, that's where the three lanes end. And a lot of vehicles will move onto that far right lane and then cut in front of traffic. Just like Eva was saying, because they're just rushing through. So if there's a traffic signal there and it's not synchronized with the one at the major intersection, there's gonna be a line of vehicles in the far right lane that all they're wanting to do is cut in front of the people who are positioned in the correct lanes. And that is not safe. So I don't, to me, the most logical solution would be to have signs on West 5th that say no left turn. You're not allowed to make a left turn onto university period then that solves the issue of the accidents because having a traffic light two blocks away from the major intersection just doesn't doesn't work if you have money and you need to do something in that stretch between west 7th and white settlement it would make more sense to change what's currently just a pedestrian signal on bristol and make that a traffic signal if, if you have to spend the money on something and you can't be on refinishing the roads. They're terrible. But Linda, let me ask you this. If you put that as a traffic signal in Bristol, aren't you inviting people to drive straight into our neighborhood instead? Well, what I'm saying is if, if I, I, what, that's, have... answer the question, aren't you instead of making people drive along the bottom edge of our neighborhood, have them drive straight into it? So as I was trying to say, if their argument is that they have money that they need to spend on some sort of traffic signal on that stretch, then it would make more sense to put it there. But what if I- If it made more sense to put it there and then have them drive straight in our house. But like I was saying, what would be the ideal situation is to just put signs on West 5th that says no left turn. And, and I agree with you and I hope that they don't listen to the second part of that. And that they certainly don't put a traffic signal on West Fifth. That's just that doesn't make any sense safety wise. So I appreciate the feedback again. Um, I'm taking notes, and I'm looking at the map for with the carry and coach. Those are the last two cross streets before we get to uh, to uh, university. 
Raul, when you speak to the, I think you said the traffic signal people? Traffic, our traffic engineer and his group, yes. Okay, if you talk to them, tell them an easy fix would be that at the intersection of University and 7th heading north, make both lanes on the extreme right turn only to the um, right to, onto 7th Street heading downtown. Right now, the one, to, uh, the one in the middle that I'm talking about can, is the one that goes straight or can turn. And unfortunately, it should just turn. And that's the one that's causing the problems to get into uh, when they cross over and cut people off. So if they would make that, the two lanes heading north at University at 7th, make them both turn right to downtown, it would stop that problem. Well, I have to disagree that, with that, like six, that, that, that makes them turn on the 6th Street. My business is on 6th Street and it's no, pretty no. easy for them to move right up and turn right on 6th Street. You're going to block my traffic from coming up university. No, because that lane would go straight there. It would be like no lane. That would be a two lane wide lane and they could turn on to 6th Street without being killed. Right now, they're being run over. Oh, I don't agree with the traffic pattern that's there right now, but I, I don't really in favor of two right hand turns when People are sitting there trying to make right-hand turns on the onto uh, onto Seventh uh, Street from University. I think those two lanes dedicated to right-hand turns is not a good idea. Agreed. I don't think it's a good idea to go straight either. I well, let's should... put it back to the six lanes that it was when it was when it worked properly. I will bring that option again. I mean, we bring that option as well. I know this was uh, just recently converted from six lanes to uh, to the two four. or five. Yeah. Well, the problem you have on that turn to to that right hand turn onto Seventh Street is if you're on the right hand side or the inside lane and both lanes turn right. Some people take that turn and go wide, and it's really tough on the second lane to try to make the right. I think it's a dangerous two dedicated two right hand turns. So I've stated that once. I'm sorry to repeat, but. So if you don't have any other comment, if you, I mean, if you ultimately end up doing this, even after the comments that are made here and you put this light in, I cannot understand why you would not make it sync with 7th Street. That looks like to me, if you go ahead, which I disagree with the use of that area, I was spending the money to do that. But if it gets done, it makes no sense that it's not synced as far as I'm concerned. But you're going to have all this traffic flowing north that's not going to be synced on 5th. You need to let all that traffic get on going down the road. And with the fact that they've caused this problem that stacks traffic up on two lanes instead of three, you probably could have it back up from fifth all the way to seventh. Oh, you absolutely would. There's no question about that. It would. At certain times make, of day, it will totally do that. You would make the seventh street, Camp Bowie, Bailey, that intersection will become even worse. Yes. Ganesh, do we, yes. Have, a, do we have a queuing um, analysis? Uh, we don't have the uh, numbers at the moment, but but again, uh, coordination is something that would be accomplished uh, with the West 7th Street if required, and it is required uh, based on the proximity of that location. But uh, what we have noticed, uh, again, based on the current traffic patterns, which again, there's a possibility that that can change, but given the current volumes on West 5th, you know, we, we don't expect that to take a lot of the uh, green time away from university. So the queuing shouldn't uh, shouldn't be bad. Uh, again, the main issues that were observed at this intersection were during the peak times. Uh, again, achieving those gaps uh, for the left turns, getting out of West 5th Street uh, was an issue leading to the uh, crashes uh, that Raul mentioned. So, uh, you know, again, during the peak times, uh, the traffic volumes are still uh, not heavy on West Fifth Street, Fifth Street, but we're just trying to provide the. The goal is to protect the few cars that are um, making that left turn during the peak times when you know university does have uh, quite a heavy flow. 
And again, yeah, as, as I mentioned, the coordination signals would be coordinated to make sure that, you know, you're not, you're not hitting a red once you cross 7th Street going north or uh, south. And during the off peak, sorry, and during the off peak hours, uh, you know, they would be actuated by a need. So if there's traffic on West 5th Street, uh, you know, only then there will be a, a green time provided to them or, or otherwise um, university will, will stay on green. So off peak will be steady green unless, unless there's traffic on West 5th trying to, trying to get across or yeah. Who do we, who do we uh, send information to? That the, the the it was mentioned earlier the trail uh, drive and university intersection and those lights. I, I I travel that way three times a day. They don't work right. They're not synced right, especially the westbound on trail hitting university to make a left hand turn or go straight. They don't work. Who do I call to get someone out there to fix the problem on getting left hand or straight? Uh, I can explain it, but it's not the point to do today right here, but it doesn't work. I do it five, three times a day. So can you just quickly tell me in what direction? Yeah, yeah. yeah. If someone's coming from the stockyard area coming east and there, if no one's there and I pull up to make a left-hand turn, sometimes that gives me a left-hand turn, sometimes it doesn't. And when it does, it's only like two cars time to get through it. But if you're if you're if you're not if you miss the left hand turn, the green never comes on for you to go ahead and proceed. The green stays off, so I can sit there, miss the left hand turn, and I ought to get a green, but I don't get a green because no one was in the right lane to go straight on trail. And my point is, the, the left hand turn signal part from trail going west to university is the part that's that's screwed up. Uh, the new segment of trail drive going west and university. I mean, going yes, turning west. west. You turn left down to university. That's right. Okay, I'll I'll pass that along to our traffic engineer. Man, That's I it. appreciate this. Thank you very much. Yeah, this is David Dodson. May I speak again? Yes, David, go ahead. Hello. Okay, so I want to go back to solving the problem without a signalized intersection. And Linda's idea of no left turn works great. People can, if they're coming down 5th Street, they can take a left on Norwood, they can go over to 7th Street, take a right, and there's an intersection. They can go anywhere they want to from that intersection. We don't need to signalize it. It would be much better either no left turn or putting bollards out there just like 6th Street has so that people can't turn left into it as they're headed southbound or can't as they're headed westbound turn southbound uh, on university. But I, you are missing the mark so much if you think that this is not going to double the traffic on Fifth Street. And it's also gonna increase traffic of people cutting through Linwood period. And I feel like that we need to concentrate on keeping traffic where it was designed to be and that's on the major streets, White Settlement, University, 7th Street. Now we don't need to be creating cut throughs inside of that parameter forum. That that makes no sense. Solve the problem by changing the way people react to that intersection. But we don't need to to encourage people to take a left because they're frustrated. And and that's what's gonna happen is people are gonna, you know, as they're coming down university headed south and they stop there, they're gonna go ahead and make it their their habit every time they trans they, they come to that intersection. To turn left down fifth instead of going up to seventh and turning fifth, uh, left. But I, I don't know. I don't know how we can go about having another meeting on this. But I'm sure going to reach out to Elizabeth back on it. And you know, I think that this bears way more studying than what we've given it. it uh, why it sounds simple to you guys, us people that live here, it is not simple. And you know, if we can't get this street fixed and we start dumping more traffic on it then you know we're opening up a can of worms that you know it, we, we we're not we're not going to be able to you know overcome and the intersection of carol and fifth is a quagmire already and it's going to exacerbate that so uh, it's important to me that we have more dialogue on this the brakes need to be tapped and i'm going to reach out to Ms. D beck tomorrow and find out you know how we can go about doing that so did i hear you? i agree did i hear it right mr 
did you say on six straight we put bollards or something or we put a no left turn sign i'm trying to yeah there's bollards out there in the middle of university where you can't turn left you can't turn east on fifth street as you're headed south on university and you can't cross university exactly I'm, I'm, okay. as you come out of as you come out of sixth street you have to turn north there's a there's a median university there's a medium medium it's called a medium yeah you can't go over that medium yeah yeah it would be so much less expensive if you extended the medium to fifth <laughs> Well, that's an option. Lot of problems. That is an, we, we wouldn't do ballers. We would do a median. Yeah. <laughs> that, that would, yeah. Oh, I wanted to ask another question uh, because we've been asking for a traffic study for our neighborhood for years. They, they keep promising there's going to be a traffic study. No one has ever done a traffic study for our neighborhood where we can prove the cut through traffic and the inconvenience and what happens on fifth and sixth. It can, how can we get it? They, I mean, there's money to put a signal light, but no money for a traffic study. Again, um, yes, um, Benia, I will yeah, I'll pass that on to the traffic engineer. I apologize, guys. We we deliver the project that they give us. So I'm not a traffic <laughs> engineer. They say this is a project. Please, you know, deliver this project. So I'll pass that on to to uh, Mr. Raj Gupta. Gupta was our traffic engineer. And uh, what's his name? Rajesh Gupta, G U P T A. Oh, yes. I know him well. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, um, okay. So we're, you know, we're throwing the idea out, out there of basically prohibiting left turn movements on West, I mean, uh, West 50. <clears throat> Whether it's by sign or by um, uh, physical impediment, like a medium or something. I think that would solve the problem. Okay, sounds like there's sort of a consensus on that, right? Agreed. Okay, that's yes. good to hear. This is what these meetings are all about. You know, we we start to sign, and I wish we would have we would have had a, an earlier meeting, but uh, with COVID, you know, it just made it a little more difficult. But uh, we'll we'll take this into consideration, and we'll talk to Rajesh, and then we will cite for another meeting um, within the next I want to say three months or so. To bring you back information, or we, if you want, actually, if you want to copy, the, everybody put their email address. All those you, all those that wanted a copy of the presentation. Yes. Yeah, and we will we will do a summary of the Q and A questions and answers, and provide it to put it on the website or email it to those that provided the email email address. Anonymous wants to speak. Oh, thank you. So I didn't realize I was anonymous. I'm uh, Nancy Tuff and I'm in the so seven area and do a lot of walking. So I'm very interested in this topic. And I just want to say that I think the idea of a traffic study is excellent because I've noticed a big increase just since the white settlement bridge has been open. So I think you're going to see a lot of different traffic patterns as more people realize that that bridge has is now completed and um, especially as you know, more and more apartments are being built in the general West 7th, Linwood, Arlington Heights area. So um, I, I love the idea of a traffic study. Okay, that makes sense, and that is correct. You know, with the new uh, White Settlement Bridge, yeah, a lot of people may not have realized that is that is open. That's another option for uh, mobility in the area. Thank and thank you for allowing everybody to share their opinions. This was really helpful. That's what these meeting are, meetings are about: about getting input. So I just want to double check. I have Eva's email address, Jeff Miller, Don McKenzie, and McKenzie Ketchney, uh, Jill Freer, and Esquatro. Anybody else that I missed? I haven't entered mine yet. Just David Dodson. I'll get mine entered. Okay. Take your time. 
Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, my name is Stacey Shores. I'm the president of Linwood Neighborhood Association. Sorry, I could not uh, join y'all WebEx because I'm on the road to Tomball. But would you please email me for any information for Linwood? Because I'm on the board. Bo I'm sorry? Yeah, we will email you the presentation if you can maybe spell out your well, email. We, we yeah, got you covered. Stacy, this is Jill sure. for you. We got you covered. We'll make sure this gets out to the neighborhood. Okay, because I heard other people's, but not anybody on the board's email. So I just want to make sure that the board is getting everything. Sorry, I'm I'm in Tomball, or I don't know where I'm at. So I'm body reception. So just make sure everybody gets the information, please. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. And Raul, I can get, I have board member emails. That's not an issue. It's people that aren't on the board that uh, we would need emails for. So. Okay. Yeah, this is, this is Brenda Van Winkle. Can, can you hear me? Brenda, we can hear you. Okay, uh, I work in uh, the building on the corner of uh, Fifth and University, and it does seem like in recent times we've had very few accidents. I don't know the the traffic is lighter and the the accidents just don't happen during work hours like they did before. But any of these solutions are going to make it very hard to get in and out of those businesses close to that intersection. Uh, and I, so that I is just, the other side of the coin. Yes. Uh, yes. Very, very we, hard to, especially, I mean, we're, we're like, what, a hundred feet from there and it's not easy now to get out of our, uh, uh, parking lot and it's going to make it very difficult. The, but the median would be easier to get out of the parking lot. I just wouldn't be able to take my little shoot down fifth street that I like to take to avoid right. the intersection. And my email is j.punterpell. I entered it. I don't know if you have it there or not. At Gmail. Um, so what is your email address again? At j.punterpell at gmail.com. Don't have it. Thank you. We'll just give it a few minutes to see if anybody else is, has any questions or anybody that joined late. I've got a lot, a lot to talk about with Raj. Sounds like we don't have any more questions, so we appreciate everybody's attendance and this great input. Again, we'll cite for another meeting within the next two to three months, and then we'll post, we'll send this presentation to all those that provided the email address. We'll post the um, the recording uh, on the uh, city's website. We do have a project site, correct? Right, Jeff? Yes. Yeah, we'll post it there. And then we will provide questions and answers um, or post the question and answer um, right up for everybody to, to look at and review. Thank you very much and have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sure. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you.